Now, Professor Dugan and his daughter were both on the Mira Tvoritz hit list, right? Which is the uh -huh. translation is the peacemaker. Uh, very kind of uh, disgustingly, ironically. Um, it is an official hit list, a list compiled by uh, the ultranationalists in Ukraine, uh, by the, um, uh, you know, the, the militants originally of the Kiev regime. Um, it was promoted by the Kiev regime's interior ministry under Arsen Avakov, and uh, even its Wikipedia entry acknowledges that it is curated by the Ukrainian intelligence services. This is like not a secret. And it's something that is, you know, quietly acknowledged in the Western media. Um, and this is a list of enemies of the state, of people to be killed. Uh, it is the largest, thousands of people. Um, the largest number, of course, are Ukrainians and are journalists, uh, but there are people from all over the world. Um, and it's uh, journalists and politicians and celebrities and anyone with any type of influence who has ever said anything against the regime in Kiev or particularly against its uh, uh, far right, its uh, Banderite fascist battalions. Um, and uh, Dugan and his daughter joined that list along with such luminaries as the preeminent American international relations realist scholar John Mearsheimer. Uh, Henry Kissinger, uh, former German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, uh, and many, uh, many others. And um, they put out the, you know, the name of the person, their, their addresses and contact information, uh, an invitation uh, to, you know, uh, deal with the enemies of the regime. Um, and, uh, you know, their crimes, as they see it, their thought crimes uh, against the uh, regime in Kiev. Um, and numerous uh, Ukrainians uh, have been openly killed and marked off that list as liquidated. The East Ukrainian journalist Ole Buzina, uh, early on, right after the list uh, was put together, uh, several uh, political figures who had served uh, in the government before it was overthrown in the, the Duma uh, as well have been eliminated. Um, and three days ago, Darius Dugan's name was marked off that list as a big eliminated uh, put across her face. And I think that the Western media in particular owes a great deal of culpability in this. Because you say, why was he, why was Dugan and his daughter, you know, marked for death if he was such a, a marginal figure? And I don't think that the, the, the motivation has anything to do with reality, because I don't think that we're living in a, a reality anymore. I think we're living in a postmodern disinformation space where the meme often becomes the reality. Um, and the Kiev regime is incapable at this point of any military success or victories on the battlefield, mm -hmm. any type of much ballyhooed, never appear, imperializing counteroffensive or the like. Um, but they, they need successes. They need to signal to the people of Ukraine, many of whom are, are extremely arrestive under this regime and, you know, and its forced conscription. I, even the Western mainstream media admits that in every city in Ukraine that hundreds of people have been arrested as collaborators and traitors. This is an ongoing process. The entire cities of Nikolaya and Kharkov uh, have been locked down in door-to-door -door hunts for traitors at this point, uh, seizing hundreds of people. Um, so they need to signal that they're still in control that, uh, you know, uh, and also uh, a threat uh, to regions like Kherson and Zaporozhye that are now free of their, their influence that they will return. Um, so uh, they also need, I think, to um, secure what is flagging, uh, as they see it, Western uh, support and uh, arm and, and funding, which they entirely need to survive at this point. Uh, particularly from Europe, uh, the U.S. is a little more um, free with its money machine 
um, uh, you know, money printer go burr. Uh, but, uh, the European, the six major European states uh, have not promised any new weapons supplies to Kiev uh, since June. Um, mm. And they've been down downgrading before that since April, uh, in large part because they don't have anything left <laughs> without heavily inflicting on their own arms supply. This is this conflict is demilitarizing um, uh, NATO, just as it is demilitarizing Ukraine, and, and and a large part of that is due to you know the Russian military and the particularly um, brutal and pragmatic uh, tactics it is using on the battlefield. But even more is simply due to the black hole of corruption is, that is Ukraine, as we have seen admitted, uh, even in American media, that 70% of what is sent over there never reaches the front. It's just sold off <laughs> and uh, for sale now on the dark net to jihadists around the world and, and, and so forth. Um, so they need victories. And what they've turned to is, uh, you know, things that are primarily in the realms of um, – uh, what the U.S. military would call unconventional warfare, psychological operations um, that have limited uh, pinprick, uh, often strategic value, right? But generate headlines, uh, sabotage attacks in Crimea in, and in Belgorod, uh, a region uh, near Kharkov that is, a, a, you know, very close. The Russian border is very close there. Um, uh, these um, nuclear blackmail, nuclear terror, artillery attacks on the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, you know, with the goal of creating an international incident to renew international focus there. And I believe uh, the reason for these, um, this attempted uh, political assassination of Alexander Dugin uh, and the murder uh, of his daughter. And, you know, we see how quickly Mira Tvoritz marked her as eliminated off their list. Um, and the evidence that the Russian uh, uh, FSB has compiled seems pretty uh, unchallengeable. Um, the, the woman uh, who, at the very least, was involved with it, we don't know whether she actually planted the bomb and uh, pushed the button, uh, but she crossed uh, from... Ukraine controlled territory into Donbass and then from Donbass into Russia. Um, she changed her hair color um, and her license plates several times uh, throughout this. Um, she was, uh, it's clear now, a former member of the Azov neo Nazi death squad that, like so many of them, had been brought into the Ukrainian intelligence service, the SPU. She brought her 12-year-old daughter with her as cover because what kind of neo-Nazi mother does not bring her daughter, risk her daughter um, when she's going to kill someone else's daughter? Um, that, that is uh, the situation. Uh, but she actually rented out an apartment in the same flat that Daria Dugan lived in, the same apartment building, um, for a month. Uh, before the attack. So this was obviously planned in advance. Um, she was surveilled. So at the very least, she did the surveilling with her. Um, then on the, the day of the murder, she went to the tradition and culture festival uh, that the Dugans had uh, annually. They kind of uh, launched it and, and were the headliners there. And on the way back, um, Daria Dugan uh, drove the car that they had been in while Alexander Dugan was continuing a conversation, it's pretty hard to shut him up when he gets, <laughs> gets talking uh, with a conversation that he had started uh, with someone else. Uh, so he was in another car just behind and he got to watch his wife, uh, sorry, his daughter uh, being blown uh, apart in front of his eyes on the road. And like we said, we don't know whether this woman uh, pushed the button, you know, planted the bomb, pushed the button, but she was definitely either the the murderer or part of the team uh, we don't know yeah. if there's other people involved yet uh, but uh, immediately afterwards she fled the country drove out again driving is you know much harder to catch uh, um, than uh, flying much less scrutiny there out through Estonia where the Estonian government threw up their yeah. hands 
said, we don't know anything about it. We haven't, you know, nope, nope. Uh, she was in Austria a day later. Um, and uh, I, I, I assume the Russian uh, intelligence is trying to follow her. But I presume that she will end up whisked off the face of the earth into some black hole like, like or even with the scribbles somewhere um, because, uh, you know, they don't want uh, her to, uh, you know, uh, say anything, uh, you know, uh, be brought to trial in, in right. any type of revealing way. Um, because otherwise you would think that the Western governments would, you know, say, hmm, well, let's see if there's any reality to these Russian accusations here. Uh, and, you know, let's uh, put her into some type of protective custody. Nope, 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 never seen her, uh, you know, so forth. Uh, so there, there is definitely, and it must be said that both Dugan and his daughter were also Again, inexplicably, the meme over the reality placed on Western sanctions lists, uh, you know, perhaps providing another degree of, of green light there uh, yeah. that, that they were a legitimate target. 